Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mark Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 9th, 2022, occurred on 3 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a new tropical storm to be forming somewhere near Mexico over the next five days, and a look at the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Could it be a historically active season? Well, let's go ahead and find out here. So jumping straight into everything, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, all is relatively quiet, at least in the Atlantic side. That is certainly good news. Uh, we do have a few tropical waves. We have a tropical wave here that is kind of uh, muted, but it is still a tropical wave that is moving through the tropical Atlantic at this point. Moving off towards the west here, no threat of development. We also have a new wave coming off of Africa near the Cabo Verde Islands. This also poses no risk of development, so the tropics are pretty quiet, at least in the Atlantic side. But we will have a tropical disturbance over here in the East Pacific that will have a high likelihood of developing into a tropical storm or even a hurricane over the next five days. This is expected to kind of meander near Mexico and could even drift northward a bit. So if we take a look at that here, we have a high probability of development on this, a 60% chance of development according uh, to the National Hurricane Center. So that qualifies here uh, as greater than 50%. So this is a high likelihood of development here. Now, this initial system could drift northward, but may not be much more of a land concern uh, over the next few days. Uh, the GFS model still insists on this making landfall over here, while the European is more out to sea with this thing. But there will be another tropical disturbance that will be forming back here, uh, which we will probably see pop up in the National Hurricane Center forecast over the next couple of days. And this is the one that could pose more of a land concern over the next several days into the next week or so. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We're looking at the GFS forecast the 850 millibar vorticity, so the spin in the atmosphere, about 5,000 feet off the ground. And just real quickly here, if you go to find this video helpful or useful, make sure to subscribe, share it with your friends, like it. All helps the algorithm out and certainly helps us, you know, get out to multiple other people and hope to continue our mission of saving lives and property. So go ahead and do that for me. Uh, but anyway, continuing on. So this is the GFS forecast. This is valid as of 2 p.m. on Friday. And we notice that, again, we're continuing to monitor this area of disturbed weather down here. Again, this is not really a well-coalesced uh, system at this point. But on the model here, this develops into a tropical cyclone very quickly. And on uh, really Friday night, or really by Sunday night, rather, going into Monday morning, we have a storm that is developing here on the model and very close to probably already becoming a hurricane at this point. Now, one of the main things here on the GFS forecast, there's a pretty weak ridge of high pressure out here, kind of in the desert southwest, and that weakness is allowing for a storm to be brought further northward, where if we look at the same time on the European forecast, again, this is valid through... Uh, to zero Z Monday, it's a much more diffuse broad system on the Euro. Now, there's a couple of discrepancies here. Obviously, in the GFS forecast, we have a stronger storm. Euro, not so much. Now, the Euro does have a track record of being not so good with storms that are developing. We've seen it in the Atlantic time in and time out. So the GFS, at least in this potential solution, could be the solution that is more correct. Um, with a storm that ends up developing a little bit quicker here by Monday. That's the current expectation even from the Hurricane Center. But after that point, uh, the upper level environment is still expected to be pretty favorable uh, for some additional strengthening. On the Euro, there is a storm that is embedded within some shear here, but in the GFS forecast, the 200 millibar wind pattern is the exact opposite. It's very well established outflow. And this is why development in the Atlantic side is probably not so much expected anymore at this particular point in time. One other thing to note here is that the sea surface temperatures here are quite warm uh, within this region, about 29 to 30 Celsius. So we're talking over 85 degrees Fahrenheit in this area. So very conducive for development, uh, but again, Portions of coastal Mexico will have to continue to monitor the progress of the system. And certainly on the European ensembles, we're noticing how this kind of lead wave over here 
is not really what we're going to be focusing on. It's probably another disturbance that will form back here that has a greater shot at becoming a land concern. If you look at the GFS ensembles, we notice that we have much more of a clustering that kind of develops more so like the Euro, but there's also a pretty significant clustering of new storms that form back here and impact land. So that will be one of the concerns over the next several days. Now switching gears to the Atlantic here and what to expect for the 2022 hurricane season. Well, at least so far, there is nothing expected over the next five days in the tropical Atlantic. I could feasibly see an area of interest being added over here for at least an outside probability of development with the GFS forecast at least. So there could be a sliver of a chance that we get some development over here in the Atlantic side, but it's probably going to be very sloppy and disorganized, if anything, at that. Now, this is kind of interesting here. This directly comes from a comparison between June 7th of this year and June 7th of 2021, both of them taken at 8 in the morning. And this is very interesting here. This is, again, a comparison of the sea surface temperature anomalies between the two years. And we notice that in the tropical Atlantic, the main development region, this region is generally more uh, warm. It's warmer than what we've seen in the last year. And certainly um, is a bit more concentrated than 2020. And so this gives some at least reason to believe that we could have a slightly more active season than 2021, but maybe not to the historic level of 2020 or 2005. However, to kind of counter that, we also have this warm kind of pool here, which suggests kind of a phase two AMO pattern, positive AMO or Atlantic multidecadal oscillation, basically just a fancy way of saying that the Atlantic is warmer than average. And on the flip side, a negative AMO would be cooler than average. But generally speaking, this is a phase two, which means a normal phase one is shifted something like this, where phase two is just lifted northward. And we could see a translation of that to uh, really back to phase one. Now, if we compare this to 2017, the tropical main development region is obviously and notably uh, cooler than average and doesn't really line up well with 2017 at all. And remember, 2017 was a very busy, busy year. Uh, but this could all still play into it because, again, if you look here at the NSEP forecast here, and uh, this is kind of just a look at where we are. We can kind of see that the positive AMO, you know, phase one is starting to kind of come into play here. And we can very clearly see that. I mean, it's a very well-developed horseshoe pattern, but a lot of that warmth is still focused up here in the subtropical uh, Atlantic. And so far, there has been little indication to believe, at least at the moment, that that is shifting. However, this warm uh, current of water up near the Canary Islands, that will be focusing southward over the next several months. And as long as we don't have strong trade winds coming off of Africa, I mean, this has the potential to warm the MDR quite significantly and provide us with kind of a blend of 2020 and 2017 for sure. Now, this is also coming off the North American Multimodal Ensemble forecast, and we took a look at this yesterday in yesterday's forecast, but this is basically showing the precipitation anomalies from Ben Knoll, who put this together, and this is for September of 2022, so we're in the peak of the hurricane season at this point, and you just look at all of these reds and everything. I mean, everything in here is above average. We're either at half above average or almost a whole percent above average. And we notice that, especially in the MDR, we're seeing these 90th percentiles, the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, we're seeing the 90th percentiles. So this could suggest that we're going to have some very active uh, tracks in through here, or at least precipitation that is well above average. And that could go to suggest a surplus of tropical cyclones um, 
certainly no deficit of rain, obviously, and something kind of peculiar close to Florida and the Bahamas here as well. So this is something we're going to have to really kind of keep our eye on over the next couple of months because this all really could play into how busy the season could be. And furthermore, if we look at the CFS forecast, this is going to be valid through August, September, and October. This is the sea surface temperature anomaly coming off the climate forecast system. What we notice here is, again, we have this pattern where we kind of have this kind of mix between a phase one AMO and a phase two AMO. It's kind of a blend between both. We do have a little bit of a cooler subtropical Atlantic and somewhat warmer tropical Atlantic, and that could lead to an abundance of tropical cyclones, stronger tropical cyclones coming off of Africa and developing out here earlier. And uh, with this sea surface temperature pattern, we have some very warm waters up here near the Canadian Maritimes, setting up a strong ridge of high pressure. And we notice that strong ridges of high pressure over this area it's kind of called the ridge of uh, you know over troubled waters and that could definitely force some of these storms further westward into the lesser antilles into the caribbean bahamas you know united states uh florida you know this is not out of the realm of possibility because this ridge over troubled waters it prevents storms from recurving as easily not saying we can't get a recurve but you know with this ridge it's definitely going to be a lot harder so we really have our hands tied and I think we're going to be very busy. I could easily see us getting well over 180 ace points for the season and, and certainly could see us, you know, having over 20 named storms. So this is, could be very busy. All right. So go ahead and follow me on Twitter at micromally one and uh, I will be talking to you guys later. So I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. And of course, I am Mike Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.